The stories in the news today remind me of the sentiments of almost 50 years ago, when many young black people felt that policing for them was unfair. During that time period, being black in America meant that you didn't walk down the street with the same sense of safety and the same sense of privilege as a white person. There was absolutely no difference in the way the police treated us in, in Mississippi than they did in California. They may not have called you nigger every day, but they treated you the same way they did in Mississippi. The police jump on you, beat you up, put the gun at your head. This is what we were going through on a daily basis. I'm tired of it. I'll stay here as long as I have to. Now, as then, the need for change is real. Nearly every black man I know has a story about an encounter with the police. I myself have been stopped, searched, and had a gun put to my head for no rational reason. There, there, there. One response to police brutality in 1966 was the founding of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. We use the uh, Black Panther as our symbol because of the nature of a panther. The panther doesn't strike anyone, but uh, when he's assailed upon, that he'll back up first. But if the aggressor continues, then he'll strike out. When I first met Hugh and Bobby, they were uh, in the process of forming an organization for uh, primarily self-defense. We didn't plan to have a nationwide organization, anything like that. We were organizing, dealing with the problems in Oakland. In 1966, California law allowed civilians to carry loaded weapons as long as they were not concealed, as do many states today. And the newly formed Black Panther Party took advantage of the law. The uh, California Penal Code section 1220 through 12027 and also the Second Amendment of the Constitution guarantees the citizen a right to bear arms on public property. Huey said we're going to carry our guns and we're going to follow the police and if they stop someone, we're going to stop, we're going to maintain a legal distance and we're going to observe the so-called law officers in the performance of their duty. Why are you coming around the corner uh, to stay facing where you are? We would stop. We would get out of the cars. We would walk up to the scene. Those who had rifles would carry them in the open. They were clearly visible. We would stand at a, um, a distance where the police couldn't say they were interfering with their arrest or their detention of the individual and uh, make sure that uh, there was no brutality. The police were confronted by citizens who were not just voicing their opinions, but were armed. They would uh, take the weapon and pass it across like this, and it would sweep past right over the officer. No one would do anything until a policeman ejected around in the chamber, then we would all eject rounds in the chamber. And all up and down the street, you could hear this clack, 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 clack. And then when the traffic stopper, the incident's over, they bring the weapon down across by you like this and get back in their car and drive off. It was very, pretty intimidating. The Black Panther Party spread quickly partly because young African Americans across the country had similar experiences with the police. We would get calls from Atlanta, Nashville, Raleigh, North Carolina, from Washington, D.C., Bridgeport, Connecticut. Every city, small or large you can think of, wanted a chapter of the Black Panther Party. There's no question that the Panthers were provocative. But there's also no question that law enforcement exaggerated the threat they posed and overreacted. Do you feel the nation is in trouble? I think very definitely it is. Well, what is the answer? The answer is vigorous law enforcement. That's the only answer? That's the only answer. How about justice? You hear a lot about justice with law enforcement. Justice is merely incidental to law and order. 
FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover today asserted that the Black Panthers represent the greatest internal threat to the nation. Hoover said the Panthers have perpetrated numerous assaults on police and have engaged in violent confrontations throughout the country. When Hoover identified the Black Panther Party as the number one threat to the uh, national security of the United States at a time when they're fighting in, in Vietnam, you know, of course that was crazy, but it was politically very effective. And it says to law enforcement at the local level, we can take the gloves off now. We don't have to respect the civil liberties and, and we can go after them with everything we got. Police say there was sniper fire throughout the early morning hours, so they moved in cautiously police and, and then black began Black Panthers to... clash in Houston, New Orleans, and other cities. The Black Panther police shoot out three dawn in hours in Chicago today. Police and Negroes fought a pitched battle. Obviously, we are nowhere near this today. In fact, we may be at a transformative moment. People of all ages and races are recognizing the problems with policing in black communities and are protesting. Now, there is a chance for real change. But police departments and political leaders must not overreact as they did 50 years ago. They need to listen. When I say no, you say violence. No.